I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. The red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fangs, claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they can be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. <laughs> you hurt yourself every single time. Um, I do. I do. Because I, I hate my hands. You would think you would have built a callus by now. Well, no, we do it every two weeks. So it's just enough time for my hands to heal. You're using lots of lotion. The, have you seen the new, the uh, the Ring of Power yet? No, I, it's I so good. I honestly don't have a super strong interest in it. If I'm going to be completely like it's, straight up with you, so I I'm going to say something that gets me in trouble with with um the IT department a lot, which mm-hmm. is I didn't like the Lord of Rings movies. I okay. liked n- n- none of them. Just all I didn't like. They were I, they they just didn't get me for whatever reason. The Hobbit, uh, I was I was cool with. I, I I I liked it. I would say the Ring of Power, I actually enjoy. It's the best of the three versions of the Tolkien uh, branding. So, I gotta say, I fucking hate Two Towers. <laughs> <laughs> I've only seen it once at a party. Yeah. Right, I was at somebody's party, like birthday party, and they put on two towers. Yeah, and it was probably the most boring, like birthday party for that, like the time that we were watching it. It might have been yeah. the most boring birthday party it could have been. So, yeah, I have, I have feelings about it. I, I actually enjoyed Fellowship of the Ring, uh-huh. and. Return of the King was interesting, but Two Towers is such a like slog for me that I've never is, gone back to watch. Is that the one with the the tree ants? Which one? The Two Towers. Two Towers. Yeah. Uh, maybe I literally remember nothing about the movie because half of okay. the movie is people running across the field. Yeah. Yeah. Which I'm gonna probably get shit from people being like, "No, it's not," and I'm like, "Fine, it may not be, but you know what? That's what I remember." <laughs> that and, and that what you remember is what reality is yeah <laughs> eh, i'm pretty sure this like going to the core thesis theses of this podcast is that that is not the case that actually you know I, yeah you're right you're correct <laughs> like like that's one of the that's one of like the main things yeah gosh there uh there i was gonna make comments but i'm gonna save them for the episodes that they're actually on I've got some good stuff banked. The uh the this book is wild. It's going to be The book be, that you're holding in your hand right now. Yeah. At Beyond Ooh. Earth, Man's Contact with UFOs, New Astounding Evidence from Outer Space including Silvery Creatures from Pascagoula, Mississippi. It's um Oh, it's the Pascagoula em- Elephant Man. It's That's the one we did an episode about that last bit. Did we do the uh, Pascagoula? I'll have to I'll have to look. Yeah, it's, we I totally did. It, to do an episode on something else because this actually has um like a, a chunk that's just f- um like f- scans of photographs and and like newspaper clippings which is really why I wanted the book the weird thing mm-hmm. about it is that it's also like part fan fiction about the news articles which well, I didn't that's, know that's literally every like have you ever read any alien shit ever cuz that's like all of it yeah it's uh, it's like almost entirely fan fiction at the end of the day. Yeah, I it's, noticed you have two two big pieces of paper bookmarks in there. Oh, they're not bookmarks; they're um, sumo stickers with the the S U M N O are the colors of the ropes that hangle from the ceiling um, at the corners of the dojo. Um, also, speaking of sumo, tomorrow one of the greatest days of the year, the start of the next sumo tournament. It's going to be great. I feel like there's always a, su- a sumo tournament going, though. Every, there's one every other month, and they're 15 days okay. long. So they're, okay. they're going literally all the time. And when they're not going, they're doing exhibition matches, which are also amazing. Or it'll be like three just normal dudes will just charge at like one guy. 
and he just bodies them. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's the funniest shit I've ever seen. <laughs> like, that's pretty great. Or they'll even they so like they had three guys go against uh, a guy named Ichi Nojo who was the last champion, and like just all of that they think they, they, they it's they were running to a brick wall. He'd like just push them and they'd go running, and then another guy what um actually drafted him in my fantasy sumo league this year Waka Takakage. The guy ran at him, and but he's not like getting down to like sumo stance. He was just watching this guy run at him, and he gets up to him, and he's got a big smile on his face, and he just picks him up and throws him. <laughs> It's the oh, funniest Jesus. shit I've ever seen. I love it. Oh shit! They're not normal oh, humans. God. Well, like, let's let's not let's let's avoid saying they're not hom- normal humans, Brandon, because that's like dehumanizing. They're 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 better than they're they, yes. They're, they, they, there's there's they're superhumans. They're superhumans, right? Their job is to every other month for fifteen days straight, essentially fight a refrigerator that's hell-bent on killing them and that's mm-hmm. all mm-hmm. they do all the time and they they but, only train every day to fight killer refrigerators but they're also killer refrigerators don't forget and, and they are also killer refrigerators <laughs> it's the best oh god that's pretty amazing oh, oh fuck i'll uh i'll just <laughs> jump right into it <laughs> I mean, I don't know where we can go from killer refrigerators to be told. Totally it ties like, back to um the episode. Why is the Grafton my... monster? Yes, thank you. You knew where I was going. Refrigerator in I the did. woods. All right. So, mm-hmm. welcome to Cryptopedia, an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind. Uh, each week, we will take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling the tales of monsters, folklore, the paranormal, and that thing that definitely lives under your bed. I'm Brandon. I'm John. And uh, today, we're going to talk about. The UFO sightings at a Bucket Metterjam uh, District School in Western Malaysia. Um, the first sighting was uh, published in an article, uh, Straits Times, on August 21st, 1970. There, there's a I'm, lot of I'm, 1970 UFOs now that I Yeah, think about there's it. a lot of shit that happened then. Yeah. Uh, okay, so it's the Straits Time, as in, like, the, the Straits of whatever time. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, the article is titled "Crowds Rush to Flying Saucer School." Um, Penang, Thursday. The in quotes, "Little men are here again." If you're here again, again, there, there's again lots of UFOs in um, the '70s. Also, lots of UFOs in um, uh, the Malaysia area. The, the website I got a lot of this information from was just like a guy who catalogs news reports of UFOs in that area. Um. It was a very interesting website. Um, I mean, the the, the what you call it? The uh, the little men. Um, I had a joke and I lost it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> if you are to believe six bucket meta jam schoolboys, the boys, all students of Stowell English Primary School, claimed also. I'm sure there's something problematic there. I didn't look into how the English got a primary school in Malaysia. Oh, talk about the English. Uh, Mm. Spoiler alert, Queen's dead. Anyway. um, Uh, Abolish the monarchy. uh, Abolish the monarchy. (laughs) She was a very devoted cousin to her husband, now king. Anyway. (laughs) (laughs) I saw that. (laughs) Claimed that a soup-sized plate or sorry, a soup plate sized flying saucer landed near them as they were playing cops and robbers in the bush besides the school yesterday evening. One boy claimed that he was even shot at by one of the five horrible looking three inch space uh Leluptions l- using minuscule space guns. Three inches? They were three inches tall. So by, by little men, they mean like they're they're three inch tall. Little guys, little fellas. Like that's that's shorter than a leprechaun. That's that's, sh- that's shorter than the hornswoggle. That's shorter than a hornswoggle. That's shorter than a horse foot. That's shorter than um, many things. Uh, so the the first report is whether it was a mass hallucination or overwrought imagination of the boys. The tale gripped the whole bucket uh, murder jam district in central province Wellesley with flying saucer fever. Uh, so, t- yeah. If it's, how many boys was it? Six? It was six schoolboys kind of got 
there must not be a lot I, going on in the central province. I, I'm gonna say that that's like really pushing the limits of mass hallucination. Yeah. Like, 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 right? Like, <laughs> like at a certain point, that that's just like, uh, you know. Yeah, at, at a like, certain point, there's mm-hmm. just six little boys fucking with you, and it's up yeah. to you to put on your critical thinking tinfoil hat and uh, see what decisions you want to make uh, from there. Was it? Was it like a was it like a slow day, like a slow news day? That's like the only thing I could think of because like But wait, well, well actually wait a second. Let's look at the let's look at the top the headlines on here. We've got um We got you can be sure of a square deal. Uh Thai press hits out. Oh, or did uh, you blow up the the newspaper yeah. picture? Jarring yeah. gets replied. No more delays, Israel. I mean, there's some fucking Israel shit going on. Yeah. I mean, 70s were pretty wrought with, with Israel shit going on, if my memory is correct. Yeah. There, there's, there was, there's, was, they, they really just needed some filler. Um, <clears throat> by tonight, hundreds of people were converging on the school, which was forced to shut its gates. So it went from six boys to hundreds, which is, mm. this goes back to that, uh, that, that, uh, episode, gosh, in Ireland, I'm so bad at remembering old episodes. Oh, the um, the 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 the, the, the like the the graveyard thing. Yeah, right? yeah, where like all um, the boys were just playing in the graveyard, and they were like, "There's a spooky, spooky," and the rest mm-hmm. of the town was like, "Of course, there's a spooky, spooky. That's definitely we real. We agree. We agree. Um, this is the facts. This is the facts. <laughs> and then they this went, is the way. And then it was all little boys with knives. Oh, oh shit! Go back, listen to those old episodes. I don't remember. I mean, I'm not. Was. I'm not. I. Uh, we don't have proof that it's not just a bunch of little boys with knives in this case. That's absolutely true. Uh, this is the first report of a Malaysian landing in quotes of a flying saucer since a similar story of little men being found near Johor Bahru School last year. The six boys. That's- that's it's not also, that long of a time frame. No, no, it's it's fairly common for schoolboys to make up aliens. Um, at, at least what that's what stance on it now. Uh, the six boys who reported their unearthly brush with the tiny spacemen were Muhammad Zulkini, eleven; Abdul Rahim, ten; David Tan, nine; uh, Suleiman, ten. Vic Snow Warren, 10, and Muhammad Ali, 8. Whoa. Whoa. There's... Whoa, I thought he was floating like a butterfly and singing like a bee around that time. No, he's floating like a butterfly and fighting off laser-blasting little people flying through the air. That's how he got to, like, do the little head bobble so fast he could... Ah, uh, shit. Dip, dodge, weave. If you can dodge a hammer, you can dodge a, a flying spaceman. That's how it goes. Oh, uh, that's how it happened. That's how he learned... That's. I'm writing a movie in my head. That's, and I like where it's going. Like a Muhammad little Ali fighting fighting aliens as a child. It's Muhammad Ali fighting aliens as a child, but like it's one of those adventure movies where it's like a group of kids. It all really happens, but there's no out, no one outside to really observe it, and. You know he lives with this, and then as he's older, he goes into boxing, and it's more like. He's a grizzled old man using, like, the techniques he used when he was younger to do things, but nobody ever knows or can know how he got to to dip, dodge, and weave so well. And it's, like, this secret and burden he's carrying with him through his, his boxing career. It's a pretty pretty great movie. Um, Is it? Yeah. Yeah. I've never okay. seen... What's that Stallone punchy punch? Rocky. I've never seen any of the Rockies. No. No. You never seen the weird fucking robot that's in I want to say Rocky 2. There's a robot in Rocky 2. There's a robot in what Rocky 2. I'm I don't know if it's necessarily Rocky 2 off the top of my head. I think it is. But um it it Okay, give me a second cuz Brandon, you have to see the scene. That okay. So if there's a robot in Rocky, why do fight movies always get weird? Like Mike Tyson's in It Man 3. Just why? Wait. Wh- oh, it was Rocky 4. Sorry. Rocky 4. Um, if it's, if it's not obvious, the Rocky movies hit, uh, a point where they're like, man, we really just can't do boxing anymore. Like, what are we going to do next? Love this picture. It's, oh, he, he's carrying a birthday cake. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, you know, do you have the, the boxing do you have the, movie. 
<laughs> so, so we need a robot with an ice cream cake. I want to point out that this scene that has the robot takes up a whopping two minutes of the runtime. That's this that's is not. That's not it. That's not nothing. How long was Rocky Four in general? Happy birthday, Polly. Happy birthday, Polly. Oh, this is just the most eighties. Wow, it had a f- it has a four point six though. Oh, because it's Rocky versus Drago. Okay, that's why. It's it's entirely bounded by uh, Cold War. Do they like, explain that's why... the robot at all? Um. Yes, they do. Okay. It's it's a like gift from Rocky to Pauly. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, but like, does Rocky just also? Because Rocky was like that was at the time a movie taking place in present day, right? So do they explain why there's like a robot servant going around and why that would have been common at the time? Or like, no, it wasn't. It, the point is, it's not common. Rocky's like wealthy at this point. Oh, so he's de- gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I have to imagine Rocky is Kanye, <laughs> and then it makes sense. Pretty much. Or is he just going by Ye now, I think? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, this music. It's very 80s. Very, very 80s. We went back to the scene about 6.30 this morning and found the saucer still car. there. Uh, surrounded by little spacemen, says uh, Zolki Fee today. <laughs> they were only about three inches high, but they looked horrible, he added. Another boy, Muhammad Ali, told the headmaster that Mr. Uh, Ui Krait Guan, that one of the spacemen took sh- <laughs> took shots at me, uh, he claimed. Uh, this this <laughs> this yeah. literally this literally reminds me of that scene from uh, the the Simpsons where um, they're like they were having babies and one of them looked at me when uh, <laughs> they see uh, Skinner and Krabappel making out in a closet. There's, I never, oh, I bumped the mic. Never saw that episode. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. gosh. Uh, oh, yeah. If my memory's correct, Paulie also falls in love with the robot. What? Uh, why? Uh, gender, male, later switched to female. <laughs> you know what? Based Rocky. I'll go with it. Uh, <laughs> they shot at me, claims the boy, at what looked like a little gun and took a shot at him. Uh, it struck me in my hand, but it didn't hurt very much. So we know they're very weak uh, spacemen. All I felt was a oh. little pain. Mr. Oi promptly proceeded uh, to the scene with another teacher, but found no trace of a spaceship or the aliens. Who would have guessed? Uh, to our amazement, five little men uh, put out the gangway and alighted from the saucer, he said. One of them, obviously the leader, was dressed in a yellow suit. So they're using hey, Star Trek w- rules. What if what if they were what if it was just a janitor? Like what if the other four people were like people of power and then the one dude's like got to clean up after your shit if you kill some people I got to like get rid of the bodies, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. The, like, and then the yellow was cuz then he could see if there was shit on the the suit and he would know he had to replace it. It's, Whereas the blue hides the shit. It hides the shit. It's it it it's quite literally st- the Star Trek colors. Yeah, like, the, the, also, Star Trek would have been out at this point. Star Trek would have been out at that point. The commander wears that yellow shirt. The science officers oh. wear the blue shirts. So, But they didn't the have commander. a red shirt with them. No, red shirts are engineering in the in, uh, the away team. But which, they didn't have a red shirt, they which is didn't. why... That's why they all lived. That's true. <laughs> it's true. If you haven't yet, read Red Shirts by John Stalzi. It's a fantastic book. Very funny. Um, Isn't that the book where the the dude realizes that he's in like a a show? Yes. And, like it's yeah, fucking amazing. It, it's like every like five minutes, people start acting weird and and behaving like they're being controlled by something, and then like the the two minute break in between, like he starts realizing that people are behaving in the same format as a television show, and and he. he <laughs> Starts being like, everything's normal. And then when people start acting weird, like, science doesn't make sense. He's like, someone will be injured. You put their hand in the box, they pull it out, and it's better again. He's like, there's no, no one can explain to me how this box works. It's not, there's no actual science. Like, he starts putting two and two together and, and tries to find a way to, like, break out of the TV show that he's, uh, thinks he's on. Fantastic book. Um, one of the, 
one of them, obviously the leader, was dressed in a yellow suit. The other four wore blue uniforms when he saw them installing an aerial on a tree branch uh, and send signals out. We got scared and ran away. Um, so this is this is the kids like their imagination can't imagine like a antenna that doesn't require an alien a- aerial at this point because it's yeah. the 70s. So they assume that an alien would have an aerial like have to set up an aerial or set up like some kind of function to communicate farther away when yeah. it probably wouldn't have to do that. Like because these are these are individuals who theoretically have mastered intergalactic or at least intersolar solar uh tra- space travel right yeah. so like i i think that an area they, i don't think they need an aerial for communication at this point it's it, it well there's even like more modern reports ufos or craft will have an, an antennas and antennae that if you could master interstellar flight or, or travel mm-hmm. If they're that advanced, why would you then also think they had the same limitations we have by sending and receiving radio signals? Like that, well, <laughs> it's because it's because you're you're grounding it on the basis of your understanding of reality, right? You're yeah. not you're not like doing a thing where you're like, oh, they're they're more advanced than us, so we have to consider the fact that like none of their technology makes sense to us. But instead, it's like some of the technology is incomprehensible, but they still got like an AM radio. In yeah, there. that and uh, <clears throat> I think it was I think it was uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson made a comment um, about like why like if someone's that that level of of like advanced like you like as the everyday you, you wouldn't commute to go look at an ant hill because the ants are so far like uninteresting and beneath you and their level of sophi- sophistication. Why mm-hmm. would you think that someone that that's much more advanced than us would consider us any less or any more than like an like why would they even bother like doing that? I mean the the only thing you can really argue uh when it comes to stuff like that is that they're looking for resources, right? Like yeah. that's the best argument you can make. Um they wouldn't actually give a shit about the humans themselves cuz like if there's only Real- an alien race that was desperate for resources, and that resource was calm. <laughs> Man, they oh. would they would be they would be fucking swimming in it with the number of teenage boys there are. Oh. Literally Man. swimming in it. Oh, I don't believe in heaven, but whew, I'm starting to if that could be a thing. What? <laughs> Just I, I, I I don't understand how that's heaven, because that sounds, because at a certain point, that would be hell. Yeah, but not at first. Definitely not Not at at, first. Not at first, but like, less than a day, it would be hell. Two days. But I'm, I'm, I'm sneaky. I can improvise pretty well. I'm sure I could, you know, escape the chains that bind me to like my comic extraction chamber. Um, I'd I'd be able to escape. Would you be able to fake come? Would I be able to... F- no. Because you just stop... Pro- like, you need a recharge time. Yeah, that's true. I mean... I, I, but the aliens don't fucking know that. They don't know... Well, I could explain to them. I'd just, I'd just be like, oh, look. I mean, look. How do you explain? Uh, Tell me how you explain. I go, like, I, it's happening. Oh, but look, no, 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 none of your precious resources are, are being extracted. Maybe but I need a hammer. Maybe they don't have faces. Maybe they don't have faces. Maybe they don't have eyes. Maybe they don't have, like, the ability to comprehend your facial expressions, Brandon. What then? Then... You need to have... You need to have basic mathematical concepts to explain to the aliens what's happening. And then those mathematical concepts have to be translated into, I can't come forever. (laughs) (laughs) So what is the path from which you go from axiomatic truths to i can't come forever (laughs) you know because i would love to see that path you got me there i'll I'll, uh i'll probably overthink this one night (laughs) and come up with something (sighs) yeah probably (laughs) oh early this this morning some boys went back to the flying saucer which was still there uh it had been moved a few yards wait didn't they say they brought like a teacher already? Yeah, yeah. I think this is across multiple days. 
Okay, okay, yeah, because Mr. Ui promptly proceeded to the scene, uh, but found no trace of the spaceship or aliens. Yeah. The, okay. Uh, it, uh, it had been moved a few yards away, but the spacemen were guarding it, they said. Also, why guard it um, if you know that your advanced weapon systems can't hurt a school child? Yeah, and well, I mean... have presumably seen, like, an adult, because they brought the teacher... I mean, so, like, philosoph- like if we're talking about this realistically, like, right? Wh- why I mean, guard it rather than put it somewhere they can't access? Why fucking, why not fucking leave the region, first of all? Because, like, yeah. y- if they're three inches tall, they basically just come up against a giant. Yeah. Like, like... <laughs> like, their worst nightmare is a house cat. Pretty much. Yeah. Apex predators, man. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> uh, they said at 11 a.m. today, uh, Suleiman and uh, Vacant Swarn uh, return. Also, I'm sure I'm fucking up these names, so don't. Oh yeah, no, don't, these are... don't add me. I I tried my best. Uh, return. Yeah, you, to the you're spot. nowhere near right. Oh, I, I'm well aware. Uh, I think Vacant Swarn you might be close to, but uh, Suleiman, I don't think you're close to at all. No, no, I don't know. Uh, during the school recess, but the flying saucer had disappeared. They, however, saw the aerial still hanging over the tree branch. Mr. Oi, so, like, they hung it up, did their thing, moved. Um, Mr. Oi said tonight... What? what? Th- they're small... They're in a tiny spaceship, right? Yeah. Uh, why? They don't have the, the space to just, like, throw out a thing that's necessary for communication. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Mr. Oi said tonight that he had questioned the boys, and he felt the whole thing was a figment of their imagination. Well, well, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Oi. Um, the next day, the same paper published an article titled, Psst, don't look now, but that's one of those little men from outer space to your left. <laughs> the space... Is... <laughs> <laughs> We're, we'll get into it. The spaceman with two horns was drawn from memory... By schoolboy uh, Wignis Warren, uh, subheading uh, 39 spaceships, 30, 31 spacemen. So who were the eight little men? So we've got eight little men that are Wait, being drawn. Eight? From five to eight. Oh, shit. There's three more. They're, they're reproducing um, on the spot. They're growing so this, their army. This image is fucking amazing, I just want to say. um, So... The the alien has like uh, very like large teeth, kind of like rat like. If I if I could say, yeah, its whole yeah. face its face is very rat like, very right? rat like. Uh, it's antenna, got the horns or horns. Yep, it has yep. a it has a shirt that is entirely comprised of like four pointed stars. Um, it, it looks almost like um. Like if the shirt was blue and the, the stars were white and you had white and red stripes where the, they're coming down, mm-hmm. it looks like he's wearing like a very, like a like a, a very American luchador almost. Yeah. Also, then the shoulders have like these like stripes, which you know kind of goes into the whole the the stripe things. There's long sleeves. The hands, I can't tell if the kid just sucks at drawing hands or if it's like claws. My guess is the kid sucks at drawing hands. Yeah. And um, knee high boots and girders. Knee high boots and girders. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, garter belts. Well, no, no. That looks like that looks like luchador shorts. Like if we're being real, this looks like a luchador outfit, like an overdressed luchador. Yeah. Very much right? so. Right. Um, although I do want to point out that the boots have a little curl at the end. Oh, well, that's a fun little whoop. curl. I didn't notice that. A little swoop. Yeah. Yeah. About the only thing they have in common is their height. All three inches of it. In fact, uh, uh, the fact oh, that God. most are armed, some were yellow, some blue, and some can vanish in a flash. Uh, wait, at least wait. two. Oh, that bottom image is their spaceship, by the way. I think. That's the space. Okay. That's supposed to be the spaceship? I, I think so, Because yes. it looks like a very, 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 very sick dog. A, or it's a spaceship for a very ill dog. Yes. So, so the, take him to the vet. The dude on the left. So it, it. So the one. So there's the one that we just described that has the rat-like face, and then there's the other one. And I want to take a second to appreciate the other one because it looks as though it has a Phantom of the Opera esque mask on it, oh, based on very this much. one swiggle. Yeah. And like, also the the stars on its shirt are lightning bolts instead. 
Oh, and sick. I kind of love this idea that like this is the heel to uh, the <laughs> face that is the previous one. Yes. And like I'm kind of living for this this wrestling league between tiny little men. It's the intergalactic pro wrestling league, and it's amazing. And they, they it's fight. the IWWF. They fight, but it, like- it it had to. It had to change. It had to change from IWWF to IWWE because yeah. it was the Intergalactic Wildlife, uh, World Wildlife Foundation. That because they're three inches tall, the the ring is actually a, a one of those Beyblade arenas that you can buy. Let her rip. <laughs> That's right. Oh my God! What if like okay, okay, so release the Beyblade, they're on top of it, they jump onto the Beyblade as it enters the stadium. Oh, yes. And that's how they get in. As long as it's not the metal, like, the metal blade Beyblades, you know the ones yeah. I'm talking about, the ones that, like, really fuck shit up. The ones that will destroy uh, your sh- bathtub. Yes. Then they should be fine, yeah. right? Yeah, they could conceivably survive. I had a I had a Beyblade that was, like, it had, like, a frog, it was, like, frog-themed, it was green, yeah. and when you let it rip, it would bounce because it had like That's a spring cool. in the bottom. That's fun. It didn't work very well. <laughs> well, no, because it's absorbing the energy. Yes, but it was fun. <laughs> it's very fun. Um, also, it would if you if you let it rip at somebody, mm-hmm. they would fucking hurt because it was metal. Yeah, they would suck. Uh. <laughs> at least two have only one arm. And even one sports a pair of horns. They are the invaders from outer space who have been sent on swamping on this sleepy town by sheer force numbers. Uh, s- s- I wouldn't. I, would I wouldn't call, call, that call sheer eight. Four, eight. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. The score. Let me read ahead a little bit. Uh, the score at lunch today was thirty-nine spaceships uh, and thirty-one spacemen. So they're they're so- multiplying. So what you're telling me is they have robots. They have, like, autopilot ships. They must. Right. They must, yeah. Um, 39th, yeah, that's true. There's more ships than spacemen. Uh, oh, wait, no, they explain it in the next thing, saying that at least eight spacemen are still wandering around somewhere. Gotcha. Well, let's see. If we know that there's eight per ship, pot- 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 well, potentially. No, no, there would be five. there would be five per ship. And 39. Right. Oh, that's why it's like, so where are the other eight little... Yeah. Little, there's a potential okay. for 312 um, spacemen at this point. That's fair. I can yeah. believe that. Yeah. Uh, which I mean, they're tiny. At least eight spacemen are still wandering around somewhere. The invaders have all been sighted by boys from Stowell School in uh, Blukar nearby. It was a uh, 10-year-old Kay Wigniswarn uh, who spotted... The one sparting the horns as he emerged from the spaceship yesterday. Um, they're they're making a lot of assumptions about like the the structure. squad size, the the number of people inside of each spaceship, uh, what type, what like what the te- capabilities of the spaceships are, why the spacemen are in it. There's like a lot of there's a lot of questions that are left unanswered. Like, are these scouting spaceships? Is there a mothership somewhere? Like, we don't fucking know any yeah. of these details. There's a bad, lot of assumptions. Bad journalism. <laughs> bad. Uh, they should have. They should have gotten an interview with one of the spacemen. Yeah. Um, this article seems to kind of fold back on itself as the very next paragraph says. He must have been the leader as he was sporting a yellow uniform while his four companions uh, with his own ship sported a more mundane shade of blue. Uh, they're pretty fierce when aroused, too. <laughs> Again. This just comes back to the cum. Just, it all comes back to the cum. It just, all comes back to cum. They're jerking you off with both hands. Because to them, it's like, you know, huge. Let's Let's hope that they didn't try to gather anything from the children. Because that would be not great. That would be a bad... They should that not be do a bad. A bad. That, that would be a bad. They that would be a very bad. It would be uh, the five armed. Although if they did, that would explain and it like become or became like some weird like fetish or kink that they didn't understand when they got older. It would explain a lot of videos that I saw. Oh, let's online. not go down um, this path. 
The five armed with miniature space blasters and one with horns loosed off Wignesworn when he tried to capture him. The result, a small red dot on Wignesworn's right leg, he said proudly. So we got, he shot, got shot in the hand and he got shot in the leg. Um, showing, it, okay. <laughs> showing okay. his chums a battle scar today, unlike the true outer space tradition, he fainted after the extraterrestrial attack and woke up in a classroom. Uh, you, what? He passed out. They shot him. He got scared. He passed out. Um, he had been discovered where he fell among the uh, blue car outside the school perimeter fence and was carried uh, by prefects. It was when Wiggins Warren, who reported seeing 25 tiny men stepping out of a similar number of spaceships uh, at the same spot on Wednesday, but once more, fate was against him. Just as he rushed forward for a better look, the school bell rang, and like all good boys, he went back to class. Not the right I'm sorry. time to listen to the bell. I'm sorry. No. Fuck that. If, if, if there's aliens exponentially increasing in front of me, I'm gonna look into the aliens. Yeah. Like, this, this is the one time you can disregard the bell. You're allowed to disregard the bell when there's tw when there's an when there are 25 extraterrestrial creatures in front of you. You are allowed to disregard the bell to investigate the extraterrestrial tre creatures, like, especially when like you could bring a bushel of aliens to class to be like, "I'm sorry, I was late, but this is gonna blow your fucking mind." I mean, yeah, like <laughs> think of the bo extra credit. Like you're you're fucking set for the year. You don't have to do shit anymore in science so class. So much extra credit. Like you still have to do a bunch of stuff in English though, because you know th they're not the same skills. No. Uh, however, he managed to draw two pictures of the aliens and their ships from memory, but not all resort to violence when threatened with capture. Uh, take the case of T. Varishingham, another ten-year-old, and his pal. A. Devaraj. Uh, after class yesterday, they went to a spot in the blue car where there were reports of a tiny spaceship landing on Wednesday. And sure enough, they saw two miniature fig figures, one perched on a branch and the other taking it easy on a rock on the ground. The boys tried to gain immortality as the first pair to ever caption, uh, uh, capture a spaceman. The little men simply vanished. The boys what? prepared to swear in a temple that they were telling the truth. <laughs> but like, don't. They're, they're 12. Don't. Don't. One of them's 10, even. Yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> uh, Vera Shangham, who tried to capture one, the one on the branch, said he was about three inches high, and the branch was about three feet from the ground. He, too, was wearing a yellow suit and had only one Shit. arm. His left. They're, what? What has happened to the, like, is, what has happened to these spacemen that they've lost arms? Like, th well, actually, that's not the case, because we don't know if they've lost arms or if they're just naturally born without arms, but that seems... True. The, when you have that many of people in a, like, away team... Yeah. Well, you know what? They just, they left their auto mail on the ship. They, they usually would have two arms. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. also, uh... I'm a fan of the live action Full Metal Alchemist. Brandon, what are you doing? I actually dig it. Like, I unironically enjoyed the one that just came out on Netflix. I watched both of them, actually. There's a third one coming out. I'm excited for that. Are you, are you fucking kidding me? No. No. I'll, that I'll give movie... You, the first one wasn't great. The second the one first one's... is actually good. The first one's terrible. <laughs> The first one's terrible. The second one introduces it's really bad Scar and the uh, and, and and multiple of the uh, the humunculi. Um, it's it's rather enjoyable. The first one had lust in it, right? If my memory's correct. Yeah, this one's got lust and uh, uh, is it greed? Who's the 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 one that eats? Uh, gluttony. Gluttony. Yes. Yeah, sorry. They're they're named. They're literally named after their deadly sin. Yeah, so th this one ha has lust and gluttony, and um, you get to see lust transform into, like, his cool form. It's dope. And there's Scar. Lust is a she. Scar's pretty cool. They're lust is the sexy lady one. Yeah. They're, I don't know, I'm just saying, it's, give it a shot. Give it a shot. If you don't... Although, I... Uh, so my favorite, one of my favorite monkey lie, I think, is probably envy because envy is such like such a flavorful one, right? Because 
spoilers for a series that's been over for a decade now. Um, <laughs> uh, Envy's like true form is like a teeny tiny little like thing. Yeah. Right. Because like the whole thing is like you know it's a tiny it's a little like petty emotion is Envy. Right. Yes. Um, but it can get like super fucking huge because Envy is also like something that can consume a person's personality. Yeah. It's very fun, very fun stuff. Although in the very first in the very first Full Metal Alchemist, Envy was like Al and Ed's like brother or something. Huh. Weird. The the first animated series is weird. It's got some weird shit in it. Towards yeah. the end. Ugh. I very definite I saw him. He was sitting on the branch, shaking his head from side to side while clasping what looked like a tiny gun. Uh, no, so he's saying like don't he sees the kid coming at him, he's shaking his head no, like no, don't no. don't he's like flashing his Don't fuck his piece. around. Um another, I'll fucking kill you. He's like I'll fucking kill you, mate. Uh another casualty of the invasion is Muhammad Arfin bin Mukhtar, seven, uh an afternoon pupil at the school whose father is a police corporal. Uh That's how you know he's that's how you know he's uh he's legit. That's how you know he's legit. Uh mm-hmm. Corporal Mukhtar uh, Ben Haki Talib said when he returned home at 6.30 last night he told my wife and me he had seen two tiny spacemen along the blue car outside the perimeter fence when he <laughs> tried to catch them, one shot him he got a small cut on his left hand and my wife treated the wound six pupils okay. of the school reported uh, they first saw the tiny spacemen on Wednesday evening, five aliens they claimed landed from a blue flying saucer, so now we know the, the actual color of the saucer the headmaster of Stowell School, Mr. Ui Guan, said he had questioned them carefully and they all insisted their stories were true. But Mr. Ui uh, said he brought two of his pupils, Muhammad Sukri and Abdul Rahim, to the scene again this morning. And they still maintained they had not been imagining things. Okay. Yeah, it's... Uh, they're, 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 he's... things. Uh, I don't know what to think, Mr. Ui said pensively. Frankly, I don't believe them. They might have seen some leaves or insects uh, moving and mistaken them for tiny spacemen. I mean, just stop there, because that's pretty much, like, that's probably it. Without, like, the absence of evidence, that's the most likely story. It's Occam's yeah. Razor. Like, they're just kids with cool imaginations, man. Like, well, don't don't take away their imagination. Um, when the news spread no. yesterday, thousands of curious onlookers flocked to Blue Car outside the school compound to examine the spot where the tiny spaceship were reportedly landed. CID officers also called the school this morning to question the boys. There were such big crowds outside the school that the main gate was closed to prevent outsiders from getting into the compound. Um, This just, like, that's such a... Must be such, like... What? (laughs) How little is going on that this is the thing that, like, thousands of people flock to? That, I don't know. It just caught on like wildfire for some reason. Um, And that wouldn't be the end of the UFO sightings, as the journal writes. 1973 would see a resurgence in cases of miniature-sized UFOs and aliens in Malaysia, largely concentrated around schools. Uh, The first of these supposedly happening at a schoolyard in Gambang near Katuan, where two schoolboys managed to catch a three-inch tall humanoid. And on this occasion, a teacher would come over to see the little man for himself before it managed to squirm out of ca- captivity and run off. Um, not long after this, kids playing football at a playground in uh, Bukit Mutterjem School saw a silvery craft only two feet across land near the field, which was enough for the kids to stop their game and go take a look. This seems to be something the tiny aliens did not appreciate as they promptly fired on the boys with beams of bright light to send them scattering before flying away in their craft. So they just kind of like, they kind of just flash a light at them like you would flash a light at like a predator to be like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. No. Yeah. They, get, they, get, get, scram. Get, Vamos. Hey, get cat. Get, scram. Uh, later that same year, another of these little UFOs would be seen on a field in IPA. Uh, this one, or sorry, this time it would be seen by some of the teachers as well before it flew off. There was also a sighting at Mary Sarwak which the witnesses, uh, again, schoolboys, saw a six-inch tall little man. They're getting bigger. Oh, shit. Oh, damn, son. In a white spacesuit trying to cut a fence with some sort of welding instrument. 
As soon as the alien knew it was being watched, why? Re- I don't just fly over it. You flew, fly. It's a fence. Yeah, it's a fence. Um, it yeah, ran off a, and was lost in the brush. Interestingly, there would be many other sightings of these creatures in white suits, uh, by both locals and some people on vacation, as well as a group. Uh, uh, a group of the entities was supposedly seen walking along a resort beach in the the area of Miri. Uh, they were taking a vacation. They were taking a vacation. That's why they're here in the first place. Mm-hmm. They're just trying to find the best beaches. They got, f- and for some reason, they're like in the middle of Malaysia. Best beaches, best bitches, Malaysia, hon. Woo! They're getting it. After the sightings, yeah, yeah. Uh, after the sightings, uh, would trail off until. A uh, mini UFO hit the news again in 1976 in an article for Flying Saucer Review, Volume 26, Number 5, January 1981. UFO researcher Ahmed uh, Jamuluddin uh, would report that there had been a spectacular sighting of one of the tiny humanoids in the Royal Malaysian Air Force Base, uh, just okay. outside of the town of Katuan, Malaysia. The first sighting was made by a nine-year-old witness who saw the creature drinking from water a water drain at the base. Oh. Don't I, don't there's drink just it. so there's so many children there's who have seen these things there yeah it's like explicitly children it's like almost exclusively children yeah it's it is basically because I, uh, I don't know that the teachers that the, no one's naming the teachers that saw it they're just saying some yeah. teachers also saw it they are naming the children that saw it so i i don't it, it might just this be, has got Kids. This has got some kind of like fey energy to it in terms of like yeah, their size. Can can't see it. Who can right? can't see it? They're chilling on yeah. rocks on branches. They're like yeah. alien fey. Um, it definitely has the same energy. Yeah, like they're they're adjacent energy. He said of its appearance, it had two feelers on its head and held a steel like rod in its hand. <laughs> uh, a pistol was hanging from his waist. It was brown in color and looked like a man. Uh, the boy said that. He went back later that evening with his friends, and they all managed to see the same being. They also don't what? get around too much. Ch- yeah, it's, it's just, just been, been chilling, chilling there. Chilling with a rod in its hand, you know. Extracting some resources, as they would say. Oh, no. Look at me. I can't extract resources unless you look at me. No. no they then no, told their want. teacher about it, uh, and he said he would oddly say of it, there was no sign of the creature in the area, but I saw a red Indian-like wigwam beautifully weaved out of grass. It was partly crushed. I what don't. What the fuck? I don't know. Why? Uh, that's the way you're gonna say it. I don't. I don't know. He said that's it. That's the way you're gonna say it. O- okay. After this, settings oh, would go fuck. quiet again until 1979, when once again, settings of these impish aliens would fire up once more. It would seem that the aliens were getting a bit more aggressive than before, as in one report, a boy had his whole arm paralyzed by one of the creature's ray guns. And in another report, these boys... So their technology is getting better at fending off us as the, Interesting. the time goes on. And another report, three boys and two adults claim to have been blinded by a beam fired from one of the diminutive UFOs at a place called uh, Kulim. Uh, God damn it. Reports would then stop again, and the last official sighting of the miniature alien invaders would allegedly happen in 1985 when a group of six-inch-tall humanoids was spotted by some school kids near a stack of wood at a school in Paka, Taranagu, um, showing that these kids had learned nothing from previous reports of these little entities fighting weapons, one of the boys reached out towards one of the creatures and was promptly shot by a beam of light that made his hand very itchy. That's I mean, I'm not going to I'm not going to knock the kids for uh for not knowing what a bunch of kids from 15 years ago experienced. Yeah. Like that's that's not fair. That's it's not and, um, <clears throat> so this is a, a little bit of a shorter one. It was too long for, like, uh, a, a grab bag episode, but... I just burped in the mic. No, I saw you blew it into the mic. I don't know what you thought was gonna happen. I don't know what was gonna happen either, but I did it. <laughs> did Sorry. Did you think I was gonna smell like my mic was gonna smell your burp? I think I tried to blow it away from me. The, uh, so I, I got distracted while writing a different episode, um... Mm-hmm. 
And I got distracted when I found out that apparently all of the letters between Napoleon Bonaparte and his first wife, Josephine, are scanned and are just available for you to read. And, mm-hmm. oh boy, did this man get nasty. Um, only a few months after their marriage, in March 19- 1796, he wrote her a letter. So this is how I'm going to fill the rest of the time, is, is nasty Napoleon letters. He wrote okay. her a letter with crazy stalker vibes, opening with, I don't love you. Not at all. On the contrary, what? I detest you. You're a naughty, gawky, foolish slut. Oh. That's literally the first sentence. That's sentence one. Oh, no. And he ended the letter with, I hope before long to crush you in my arms and cover you with a million kisses burning as though beneath the equator. <laughs> oh, that's that's a that's a eating... That's an eating out joke. That's, that's what that means. <laughs> he, gets, he gets nasty with it. The very next month, he wrote her from Milan, saying, I should be alone and far, far away. But you are coming, aren't you? You're going to be here beside me, in my arms, on my breast, on my mouth. Take a wing and come, come. A kiss on your heart and one much lower down, much lower. Much lower. <laughs> How... I- is is Napoleon negging, by the way? Because I'm like pretty sure that he's negging this woman. He's negging his wife. <laughs> How oh, have- it's his wife. I just I totally zoned out. Yeah, he he's negging his own wife, calling her. I hate you, you slut. I can't wait to get my arms on you and kiss eat, eat you out. <laughs> like that's that's what he's writing her. <laughs> How happy I would be if I could assist you at your undressing. The little firm white breast, the adorable face, the hair tied up in a scarf, a la Creole. Now, I guess Josephine wasn't big on texting back, because he replied to her lack of responses with the letter, like a big ol' creepy clingy baby. Um, your tears rob me of reason and inflame my blood. Believe me, it is not in my power to have a single thought which is not of thee, or a wish I could not reveal to thee. I, I write you, my beloved. Oh, sorry. I write you, me beloved, uh, very often, and you write very little. You are a wicked and naughty, very naughty, as much as you are fickle. It is unfaithful so t- to deceive a poor husband, a tender lover. So he is, what the? F- <laughs> like he is a little hornball. Why is he being such like? <laughs> oh boy he's just a just a horny motherfucker um without his josephine without the assurance of love what is left of him upon earth what can he do you don't write to me at all you don't love your husband you know how happy your letters make him so he's writing about himself in the third person at this point and you don't write him six lines of nonsense this is the i mean like, I mean, he's the proto, he's kind of the proto incel, and that's like. Yeah. Like, also, is, keep in mind, this is the emperor of all of Europe. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> like, but what really got me on this little tangent was a very specific line from one of his letters. Um, uh, from a book, uh, Letters of Love uh, to Josephine, but in French, and I, I don't, I'm not going to say French words. On page 155, there is. Uh, net ti love pas, je cours et dan, huit jours, je suis la. I don't speak French. C- imagine I said it right. Uh, and that okay, means, cool. do not watch yourself. I am coming in eight days. I will be here. Our Napoleon. Oh! <laughs> our boy Napoleon liked himself some stanky stank. Oh. He liked himself some 1700 stanky stank. That's pretty stank. <laughs> like, he's a nasty boy. He's beyond a nasty boy. But this is just the beginning of the rabbit hole um, that I will leave at your feet. This quote is a bit contested uh, as there is only hearsay of its original context and no original source is readily available. And the word comes up frequently, cassoulet. Uh, a French colloquialism referring to the aroma and residue of an unwashed vagina. But there is no historical context or recurrence of that word. Um, with uh, uh, going through the editor's comments 
on a, a, a Wikipedia article. He says, I'm French, and I've never heard anything about the co- colloquialism which you speak about. Um, and it... <coughs> excuse me, I'm choking on my own spit. And uh, does anyone have any history sources? I remember reading that the history of Castellet, that it was made in the winter and only pres- out of preserved meats, confit, and sausage were available. The word cassoulet is used for its meaning in, uh, 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 used for this meaning in She Comes First, The Thinking Man's Guide to Pleasuring a Woman by Ian Kerner. Uh, oh. This commenter fails to include the book that the book was published in 2004 and that the author probably knew about the whole horny Napoleon thing and wanted to, like, get up his Scrabble score. Um... And indeed, when you swap the OU for an O, you only get recipes for small casseroles. So what does this mean? I think that that this, because it's, I went down the rabbit hole and and I got hung up on the word cassolet. What this means Mm -hmm. is that this guy found all of Napoleon's super horny letters. And he, he, Mm -hmm. he essentially invented the, uh, I want your unwashed stanky. And then he used the word cassolet in that context in a vacuum in 2004 in his like weird incel vibe she comes first the thinking man's guide to pleasuring a woman like he like I think Ian Kerner invented the term castellet for for um meaning on on like uh veggie veggie odors and I've heard it being used outside of the context of Napoleon letters and this like weird like book on like pleasuring ladies so it's slowly growing and it's just weird cool I just find it weird oh okay <laughs> I, I I it's not even like my the whole start of my Saturday and I feel like it's been ruined now <laughs> you're welcome you're welcome <laughs> I don't know what's happening in my life anymore. Uh, what is happening? I feel like I feel like Stu in that episode of the Rugrats where he's like making the pudding. Yeah, that's how I feel right now. You know what would cheer you up? What the second Full Metal Alchemist movie or Day Shift? If you haven't seen that, Snoop Dogg's a vampire hunter. It's pretty great. I, I've been so I've been kind of so. Okay, what happened was the new Bee and Puppy Cat series came out. Yeah. And I don't know if I showed you that or I've, not I've like some. when the yeah. pilot came out. Yeah. I was like super fucking obsessed by the pilot cuz like like I think I re- watched the pilot like no joke like 30 times. Yeah. Um because it's one of my it's one of the funniest fucking things I've ever seen. Uh then the the like series didn't do it for me because I they changed B's design, they changed how she acted and like kind of infantilized her in a way that I yeah. wasn't super okay with because I felt like it it diminished the thing that I liked about the pilot. Um but now they've they've gone back to the Netflix series and the Netflix series I feel like has really fucking nailed it. Nice. So I was watching that and then I had to do some work and then uh, Christina put on Steven Universe. So I've just basically been watching a bunch of like uh, a bunch of animated stuff that I fucking love lately. So yeah. that's just been my life. Like a bunch of animated stuff that doesn't make me feel sad. It just makes me feel happy. Yeah. <laughs> so I-, I don't know. I can't. I I don't know if I don't know if a uh, Full Metal Alchemist, including Scar whose uh, backstory involves genocide is going to make me feel super happy. Oh, um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, um, let's see. Because you want to see Dave Franco get his head cut off? Spoiler. Is that in... Day Shift. Is yeah. that in Day Shift? Dave Franco is like a DMV worker for... I'm not going to like give out his role, but essentially that's his role. Snoop Dogg's like the most badass vampire hunter. So, like, when shit goes down, they're like, oh, we need to get Snoop Dogg in here. And then Jamie Foxx is, like, the main character. It's pretty... I, I did... I, did, I did recommend it. It's actually good. Like, a, hmm. an action comedy... Uh, they do... Va- they actually handle vampires in a very interesting way that's different from other um, films in this case. So, it's, it's... It's unique in a good way. Interesting. 
Yeah. Is it a, is it is it uh, a movie? Yeah, it's a movie. It's a movie. Okay. And it's okay. Not an absurdly long movie, which is like it had basically a Snoop Dogg as a vampire hunter, and it's it's a tolerable length. Are the things that got me into it. Um. Uh, Snoop Dogg is one of the vampire hunters. I was like, that's not Snoop Dogg when I looked at the picture. It's Jamie Foxx. Oh, yeah, he's one of. So, like... He's one of. Okay. There in, there, there's, like... Yeah, I see I see Snoop Dogg now. He's, like, in the bottom left corner wearing the black outfit. Yeah, he's a badass. There's, like, okay, a universe it. where, like, there's, like, a vampire hunter's union, and if you collect their teeth, you can, like, depending on, like, the quality and type of vampire, there's different values. So, like, there's a whole, like, sub-market... Um, it, it's very interesting. So it's basically it's basically just an isekai. Yeah, that's probably why I like it so much. Like to be it's honest, like I isekai. ran out of isekai, and I oh I, no, you haven't. Well, no, let, you let haven't me rephrase it. that. I only subscribe to Crunchyroll in the winter because during the spring and summer I have too much like housework going on, so I just stick mm-hmm. to what's on Netflix and and Hulu and Amazon, and um, so. Once once winter comes around and there's less house maintenance to do, I'm, I'm gonna re get Crunchyroll and, and get back into the new seasons of of shows I haven't been able to watch yet because I haven't well, been able to watch like uh, <coughs> reincarnated as, as a slime. The new season I haven't seen the new season of Demon Slayer. I'm behind on a lot of stuff. Demon Slayer's on Isekai, but it's still very good. Um, no, it's Shield Hero. It's a- uh, there's a lot of of stuff I got to catch up on. I've I've gone past the point of watching anime. What's um, that mean? Okay, so there's two stages, right? You have anime, uh huh. Then you have you go to the manga because that's quicker to read, okay. And consume, and then after the manga, there's the true nightmare level where you're reading the the original either light novels or web novels. I'm at that oh. last point where I'm reading like light novels and web novels yeah. of anime series. So like yeah, I've kind of hit a point. <laughs> well, you know, there's if you want a rabbit hole to go down, I forget the name of the website, but ProZD um put something out saying like why are all these isekai coming out and why do they seem so similar? And it turns out that all of these anime are being pulled from this website where people publish their own, um, uh, like, web manga. And mm-hmm. there's this one website that, that animation studios go to to pull because it's it's where all the popular stuff is and all the popular stuff happens to be similar. So you can actually... Oh, oh I'm going to die. I'm, I'm going to have to find it later. Are you, are you talking about Webtoons? I don't know. Cause uh, like, I'd have to watch that uh, Pro... ZD uh, video Prosdy. game. Pro- is it Prosdy, not Pro ZD? I always, I just always say Prosdy. Oh. Um, I mean, Webtoons is more popular with like Korean, like manhwa type stuff. But there's a bunch of stuff that I just accidentally uploaded to Webtoons. <laughs> you just Sorry. uploaded their logo. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was, I was, I was putting it on there because if you recognized the, if the, it was in the thing, I assumed you might recognize the. No, the logo. no okay. it didn't, uh, didn't. Didn't trigger anything. Didn't, 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 didn't trigger awaken any, anything. Any memories. No. You're not Dean. Uh, whatever his fucking name is. I want to say it's in all Japanese. But, but I don't There's... know. I have to. The the whatever. I'm not going to even get into it. Do you want to do plugs? Because I think we're done. Yeah, we're done. We're talking Let's do about plugs. <laughs> we're talking about isekai at this point. <laughs> yes, when we get um, to isekai, you know it's it's we're done. So our website is cryptopediacast.com. Instagram is at cryptopediacast, and so is our Twitter. Um, if you want to email us, cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com. We have a Patreon. There's a link in the uh, show notes. Um, and we thank our jackalopes every episode because they are the people who literally keep this ep- this show hosted. Uh, so thank you, Clay Sinclair, Marty Von Party, Bird Schneider, Lenwood Sharp, Matthew Smith, Bushcraft Kelso, and Will Smith. Uh, that's all right. 
Also, um, if you're uh, a Jackie Jackie and you want to jack us off, um, there's extra bonuses other than just getting your, your names done be redded. Um, you get, uh, like, you've got your own special channel in our Discord server that's just for you mm-hmm. and none of the, uh, the other peasant casuals. Um, uh, there's, uh, you get copy, episode copies. You can look at the things that we look at when we read. You can see the cool pictures because we have lots of cool pictures. Every those time. are also, I, I do want to point out, those are also uploaded, have been and will be always uploaded to the, the yes, Patreon feed. They're, they're also always available on the Patreon to read. Uh, Except when I forget to upload them. Yeah. And then I remember a week later. Yeah. Like, I've been. That's usually how it goes. Posting them in the Discord um, for fun, uh, the, 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 uh, a couple copies, but the full uh, breadth of them, all 120 at this point, are available on the. Uh, uh, the Patreon. Technically, it's not 120 because some of them are the same copy used twice. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Um, some of mine, at least. And then also in the uh, the Discord channel that you get, uh, when I've got more than one episode written, uh, you all get to vote on what you want to what what you want to have uh, see this week. So this one, mm-hmm. uh, they voted for. I think mostly because I I did mention that it was short and I was gonna be reading some Napoleon's dirty letters. Yep, yep, yep. I'm pretty sure that's 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 how that happened. Yeah. Um, you'll never get that chance for me because I have a strict policy of waiting until the last minute. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, to be fair, my job is literally writing papers. Like your job. Yes. Cr- that's <laughs> literally my job. So. <laughs> the, it, it's your job is to write papers and and we're essentially writing an essay for fun every other week mm-hmm. yeah no it's my it's i do my job in my job yeah you do your job at your job and it, that's also how you know it's the end of the episode because <laughs> i yawned yeah um we also have a discord where there's a link in the show notes um Ooh, there's a YouTube as well, which I got to get around to making the com slash videos or YouTube or whatever, or videos.cryptopediacast.com subdomain. One of the days I'll get, I'll get around to it. Um, cause we have a, we have a YouTube channel that I upload stuff to, uh, it's all the same podcast episodes. It's just, you can potentially use auto transcription, um, that I want to someday actually go through and correct. But, uh, what is time? Uh, <laughs> anywho, uh, if you enjoyed the podcast, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, share it with friends. Uh, also, send in monster requests and stories, particularly to me, because uh, I'm always looking. Always looking. Do you want access to my like massive no. list of things that I, I need to? No, start no, 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 okay. no, 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 it, it like it takes away the the venom from the viper. Okay. Right. Right. Like that's the problem. It be it just becomes too. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh. <laughs> too easy. Okay. Too easy. Okay. Um, you could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at cryptobrandon or at Heinz Canada. Yeah, that's facts. Uh, I'm on Instagram at me2057. My Twitter is at JF Dunham. My website is johndunhamgames.com. And my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com. And his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. Things are going to get weird. 